Hello, my legionnaires. I speak to you from the battlefield, as we are in a grand campaign against the glorious Persona 5. Before I can give a full review on this game, I feel that I need to actually beat and defeat the entire thing first. So, I figured I'd kind of check in with you guys and kind of give you my thoughts about a week after the launch, the official launch of it here in the States. So, I jotted down a few things. This is going to be as spoiler-free as it can be. Uh, if you look at some of the trailers and you've seen some gameplay and stuff, it's not going to be anything too crazy if I talk about story stuff. It's only going to be the first couple of hours, but nothing beyond that point. I promise I won't ruin anything for anyone. Uh, hopefully that is really dire or uh, something that you're like, oh, Jimmy, that's a big spoiler. So anyway, um, let me give you a quick synopsis of what I've kind of uh, done thus far. So basically, you play as a sophomore in high school, gets transferred to Shujin Academy uh, here you're there under weird um, pretenses. There's something that happened in your past, and uh, people are kind of whispering. There's a lot of rumors. You get a lot of strange looks from other students. But you meet this uh, guy named Ryuji, who's kind of also an outcast uh, to some degree because of some other stuff that happened in his past. Um, and at this school, it's kind of run by... Um, well, it seems that there's one individual in particular, this physical education teacher, who used to be a former like, pro volleyball star, that is kind of making life difficult for the students. Uh, he's kind of making volleyball the focus, and he's kind of mistreating students, but no one's really come out and said anything yet about that. Um, and <clears throat> with no way to fix or alter that themselves, uh, this these two sophomore, or this one sophomore student and Ryuji, they're like, oh, we, we don't know what to do, we're just, you know, teenagers can't fix this, this guy's being a jerk to us, we can't really do anything with us, and he's trying to get them um, expelled because he really doesn't like them just because they've had some weird run-ins. Uh, they're like, how are we going to get rid of this guy? So what happens is they eventually find a way to get into this place called the Metaverse, which is this really interesting place where uh, it's this land kind of between worlds almost, or this kind of behind the veil where twisted desires of humans take a physical form of a palace. And palaces kind of serve as the main dungeons of the game. But if you are able to steal the heart of a palace, the fortress will crumble down and the uh, individual in real life will confess all their crimes. So if you are able to go into a palace, if you as a person go into a palace and you're able to do that, the person in real life won't necessarily know that you were the one who did this, but it allows you to go in and kind of make them uh, change their ways and stop being such a bad person. So to infiltrate and defeat the people and the guards in this metaverse, these shadows that are guarding these areas, these palaces and stuff, the protagonists awaken the power of personas. Now the power of personas, that's an interesting thing because obviously that's the title of the game. And this game talks a lot about how we wear different masks. We have a mask that we show everybody else. Um, we have a mask that we show our close friends and family. And then there's a mask that we keep all to ourselves. And so we kind of play with that theme a little bit here. So for instance, the, the main character we play as is kind of just kind of pretty regular. He doesn't really do anything crazy or anything, but once he gets into the, the metaverse, he really kind of opens up and he's a little more aggressive and stylish and all this stuff that he isn't in real life. But these personas uh, that everybody has are the latent rebellious nature within them. They come to life at these moments when they are kind of forced into a corner. Typically, it's in the metaverse that this happens, in this alternate dimension. It's not like they're walking around with it, they're like, ah, oh, my persona's coming to life. Um, so, not that I've seen yet, maybe later, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so they have these powers of personas, which kind of act as these pseudo kind of summons from maybe like Final Fantasy, which allow you to use magic and stuff like that. And then for the main character, he has the ability to uh, fight other shadows, which happen to actually be personas, the, the guards around there. So if you fight them and you knock them down after weakening them, you can talk to them and you can potentially get them to join your team. So it's kind of like a, a Pokemon thing. So it's like you can either say, like, lend me your power and you have to talk to them and convince them. Or you can try to get money from them or you can try to get items from them. So kind of do a few different things there that you don't normally get to do in a uh, turn-style based RPG like that. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much the the gist of the game, it kind of strikes this dichotomy between your regular day-to-day -day life as a student in Japan, in Tokyo, and you're kind of moonlighting as these phantom thieves, which you're kind of going around and stealing the hearts, quote-unquote, of these uh, other people and things like that. So, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so as you can probably see here, you've been seeing some gameplay. It's just going to be kind of 
just me walking around the school or running around and fighting stuff in a palace because Atlas kind of put out this thing about they have specific things they want people to see and don't want people to see. So we're going to try our best to keep within those boundaries. So if you're like, Jeremy, it's not, you're not really showing too much, that's probably why. Um, so let's talk about the pros first, because usually in my reviews I want to talk about what I say like are the highlights, and then we do the shortcomings afterwards. But the pros, so the, the three main things that come to mind right away for me are the art, the style, and the music. The art, obviously apparent. If you don't like how this game looks right now, then you might have a big problem with it. But I absolutely love how it looks. I think it's got this really cool anime kind of sharp edge to it, and uh, it's just it's just really fun to watch a lot of the time. Now, the style, uh, which kind of goes in line with that art, kind of ties in with it, it's the little thing. So it's, you know, you're um, the main character after you steal something, which they have like these little treasures in the palaces that you can take, he kind of like will pull his gloves down a little bit more. Or after maybe everyone does a super attack, the person who initiates the, the super attack for your entire team to do on a downed enemy, instead of you're like, oh, we could either try to get this person on the team, um, or we could try to get money from them, or an item from them, or whatever, or we can use an all-out attack where we all just go crazy on them. And then the person who initiates that gets to kind of jump down at the end, and then they get to strike a pose, and it's kind of like a, they show like a drawn version of them, and they're kind of doing like a cool, like, yeah, like, doing the, the rock star kind of like, you know, devil horns with their fist or something like that, or, yeah, it just looks really cool. So if you like anime, then it's a lot like it's coming to life so like when I tell people I like to play video games because it's like you know directing your own film this is like playing a real-life anime that's basically what it is and the music uh, which is just so good I've heard these tracks a lot now but they are so dang good just the the battle music and just the day-to-day -day life music just it all is perfect even though I've been hearing it a lot I've been hearing like 15 hours worth of stuff it is so dang good combat is really really fun uh, it's very fast-paced uh, which is kind of interesting for something that's typically turn style based usually they're kind of slower paced it's like oh here we go again we got in another battle but it is it's fun it's really quick it's hectic and it's visually arresting it's just there's a lot going on screen so being aware and cognizant of like what your character can do at any time or the other people on your squad can do kind of finding the weaknesses in the other um, shadows or eventual personas that you're fighting can allow you to really get through a battle really quickly or if you don't tap into those weaknesses and knock them down then you're gonna have some issues so for example let's say you have um, two or three enemies that are weak to uh, a wind attack so you have to get to uh, this one particular character that can use wind right away because maybe you don't your main character hasn't gotten a persona that can use that spell so once you get to him you can knock them both down and they're both weak to it so like these two or three enemies they fall down to the ground and that's when you get to go up and you can either bargain with them you can use your all-out attack try to get some money try to get some items or something like that so that's really something to keep in mind even getting into a battle is kind of a a big deal too because you are thieves so what you try to do is you try to ambush people so you try to use corner cover and kind of sneak in and out and then ambush somebody so you can get the drop on them so everybody in your turn everybody in your party gets to go first before they get a chance to go at all which is really really good because on the opposite end of that if they attack you first then they surround you and they all get to attack first and it is very problematic you can't really get away from them and it's really frustrating there is the uh, middle ground where you both kind of run at each other beforehand and then you just attack them and then it just goes into normal like battle sequence like you go, they go, that kind of goes you know, back and forth a little bit more. But it's really, really fun and it's pretty cool to see the personas kind of floating behind you and things like that. The, the main personas, the main kind of summons of the, the cast look so, so cool. Um, they're really, really neat and they actually have a place and name in history too so that's kind of cool so if you see one that you're like oh like I can, I can look him up and you they're like some characters from literature and stuff like that it's really really cool yeah uh my goodness the writing and the voice acting i want to talk about that a little bit too uh very very well done especially for english i didn't know if it was going to be good but for anyone who likes anime or likes other video games you will definitely notice a few of these voices and that's not a bad thing. It's very good, and it seems realistic. There's not a lot of things that these teenagers say that I think, oh man, a teenager would never say that. They say, they say it exactly the way I would assume they would. And it's really, really well done. Even when they're texting you on your phone, it's written the way that 
that probably be written by like a teenager typically you know it's sometimes they use like just a lot of the times I should say they use like full sentences that seem very very correct in punctuation and grammar but for the most part it's uh it seems very well done and I really appreciate that because you have to listen to these guys uh, a lot so it's better better that than uh, the alternative which English dub in the back or in the past has been problematic um also, that leads to wanting to establish and fortify relationships with your comrades, which is very rewarding, not only because you get to learn more about them and see what drives them, but it also increases your own um, stats with that character. So, for instance, I sh or like a chance encounter. So, if you increase your kind of um, relationship with Ryuji, like eventually he'll maybe follow up on an attack of yours in battle, because what they say, everything that you do in the real world will affect your time in the metaverse and your powers and your abilities. So having a stronger bond with him allows you to access certain abilities and certain combos that you wouldn't normally have if your bond wasn't as strong. So that's really, really cool. I really love that. They also do a really good job of integrating anime cutscenes when they're showing off a new character or a big uh, kind of plot moment, which is really, really sweet. And so you get to see this stuff actually come to anime life. And then transitioning back and forth isn't that difficult. It actually looks so good. It just I could watch a whole series based on these characters. It's it's that great. I really really love it. And one thing you have to know about this game is that when you're playing it, hours of your life will melt away. You will just start playing maybe at eight o'clock at night, and then you'll look around and you'll say, "Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's two a.m. What what the heck happened?" Because <laughs> you're just like, "I want one more day. I want more one more day to go to the batting cages and like try to you know get hit all the you know, five in a row or try to go." do this cheeseburger eating contest to get my guts, um, one of your stats, get my guts up so that will allow me to have different uh, dialogue options or things like that or try to read more and gain more knowledge so you um, have a, a better time with uh, other dialogue options or you know potentially being better at school. So all that stuff uh, really comes into play. Now even though this game has got, I could just go on and on about all the pros because there are very, very, very many. There are a few cons that I've, I've noticed so far. There's a lot of the time I'm just pressing the X button. And what I mean by that is when you get to certain parts in the story, you kind of just keep hitting X because like someone will talk and then you have to press X to go to the next paragraph or to the next sentence and then they'll talk again and then another person will talk and you go back and back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And then you might have something to say, you choose something, but it's a lot of the times in certain points in the story, they kind of just drag you along and you don't get to do anything. It'll just take you from school to home to school to like a meeting back to home. And it, it kind of sucks because the freedom is a lot of fun, but it's just at certain points in the story. It's not the entire time, but thankfully the, the good writing and the fun characters uh, alleviate that problem. Certain times in the story, um, you know, like I said before, you you do get led around, and so it makes those moments when you get to walk about freely and get to choose what to do with your time all the more special. Uh, but like I said before, it, it is problematic, and it, it can be annoying when you're just you want to make a lockpick. Let's say at night you can make lockpicks in your room, and you have the evening, but then the you have a cat that's with you that happens to play a part in the story, and they're like, oh no, like you should. We kind of did a lot today. You should go to sleep. And you're like, okay, can I go downstairs and go outside? I have to go buy something down the street. It's like, no, no, no. We should just rest for today. And you're just like, why did you even bring me back to this room just to save and then go to sleep? It's like, oh, just like let me do something. So there's like a few times where there's just like four or five days in a row where I couldn't do anything it was just like here you go this is the story so it's that's one like little grievance i have with it uh even though i talked about the arts and everything looking great before there are some spotty textures here and there sometimes you'll kind of walk around and you'll be in a palace or something and you'll see something kind of grainy and it looks weird it's not a performance issue it's just that i i don't think everything was really taken into account as far as that goes but everything else the characters and the enemies and the worlds all typically look really amazing it's just that once in a while you see something that looks kind of last gen looking where you're like okay and that's what this game feels like it feels like a, a ps or even like two gens ago but like a ps2 game in the best possible way like moved up into this era and that's it's not a criticism it's just that that's how the game feels and i really really enjoy it I'm not going to give it a full score right now. I just wanted to kind of tell you guys where my thoughts are at. I don't know when this review will come out, but for a lot of people, I think if you want this game, you already have it. If you're on the fence about it, I think you wouldn't be disappointed. If you like JRPGs that are really in-depth and have a lot of systems, because there's a lot to kind of delve into and get enveloped by, 
then you'll really love it. If you love anime, if you like just a good story, or you like turn-style based combat, but a fast-paced version of it, I think there's a lot to like here with Persona. A lot to love, to be quite frank with you. It's, it's just so cool. A lot of the times I just get stuck on the uh, intro uh, theme or the, the menu screen or the opening cinematic that's all anime. It's just so great. Oh my goodness, it's so cool. There's not a lot out there like it. So to all those people who have uh, checked this out and are still not sure, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions specifically. Or you can tweet at me, I'm at GoCritical, or at my personal Twitter account, I'm at just uh, JimmyGood013. Check it out. Uh, but thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Hopefully this answers a few of your questions. But for anybody out there, let me know if you are if you are playing Persona, what are you enjoying the most about? If there are any qualms that you have personally. Like I said, I don't know when this review is going to be done, but I will do this review for you guys because I'm not afraid to take it on because it is a glorious battle that I don't mind waging day after day after day. I've been finding myself just trying to make excuses to not go out at night and <laughs> just stay in and play Persona. I'm like, oh, I just want to do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to join our Legion, we'll welcome you with open arms. And uh, like I said before, please leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just have a comment on the video. Do you guys like reviews in progress? I'd like to know that too because, you know, sometimes that might be a little easier for me to do as opposed to doing a full review and trying to rush through a game and then just put out a number on there because once that number's out there, you can't really take it back. So I want to give this its due time, give it due process, you know, give it its due. Due, do, 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 do. Uh... <laughs> Again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help the show, the best way you can do it, share this with a friend. Share our channel with a friend. If you guys have any more recommendations for games that you want to see reviewed or covered here or on the Twitch channel, please never hesitate to let me know. And just remember to adapt and overcome.